Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. In 2001, I started teaching a week-long hand tool workshop entitled Training the Hand. Now, I've been teaching it since then. We've taught it numerous times. In fact, I've lost count. We've had hundreds, if not thousands, of students. Um, a very brutal class in that we run five days. We usually start at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and we often are working till 9, 10, even 11 o'clock at night. But in those five days, what we learn are the fundamental skills required to actually produce furniture with nothing but hand tools. Or it can simply be a means of boning up on your hand tool skills to augment what you're doing with machines. On Monday, we go through the sharpening process. We learn to properly prepare and sharpen our chisels, plane blades, uh, scrapers. We also work on, on uh, hand saws. On Tuesday, we learn to use hand planes. Everything from the block plane, a uh, rabbiting plane, shoulder plane, joiner, smoother. On Wednesday, we learn to dimension lumber. Now, this is where we take a rough board, we hand saw it to length, using winding sticks, scrub plane, joiner, and smoother. We go through the process of making it flat, smooth, and square on all six surfaces. It's quite a task. First time you do it, it could take hours. Second time takes half that amount of time, and third time it's even quicker. But it gives you a really good understanding of what flat is and how important it is, how critical it is to being able to produce good quality work. On Thursday, we devote the entire day to dovetails. We start off with uh, through dovetails, then we do half blinds. Now these are the most two most common joints, so that's where the bulk of our time is spent. But we also do something called a mitered edge dovetail and something called a hound's tooth dovetail. On Friday, we do mortise and tenon work. The bulk of the time is probably spent on something called a blind or a regular mortise and tenon where you would never see the joint once it's assembled. But then we also do a fancier and even a stronger version called a through wedge tenon where the tenon actually protrudes all the way through the mortise to the other side. The inside of the mortise is flared and wedges are driven from the opposite side which makes a very decorative joint but also an extremely strong joint. This coming summer, which would be 2014, the month of July, we're teaching it <clears throat> in Welland, Ontario, which is just outside of Niagara Falls. About 45 minutes driving time from the Buffalo Airport if you're in the U.S. and about an hour's drive time from Toronto Airport if you're in Canada. And it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's right on the Welland River. It's an old restored barn that owns by, uh, is owned by a friend of mine, Mike Smreck. It's on the family property of several hundred acres of farmland. It kind of feels like it's out in the middle of nowhere, but it's actually not that far from downtown. However, the feeling that you get when you're there, it's just absolutely serene. It's uh, calm, peaceful. There's always a nice breeze blowing through. Most importantly, we have good, solid benches. We have Schoberg uh, Elite 2000, which is a good, solid bench. It's four inches thick, and you have to have a good bench in order to go do good handwork. Mike takes care of dinner for us, so about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, he fires up the hibachi, and uh, the food is fan absolutely fantastic. The setting in this rustic barn, it just couldn't get any better, any more classic for something like a hand tool workshop. Now we're also offering what's called an advanced hand tool workshop. This is where we'll employ those skills learned in the training the hand, whether you've taken training the hand in the past or whether you're taking it this coming summer. But during this week, we actually will build a piece of furniture. This year, what we're going to do is build a shaker two-step. And that, as I said, will employ the skills that were learned the week prior. There's dovetails, there's diminishing lumber, there's through wedge tenons. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge. Uh, I try to aim for a project where 70, 80 percent of the students will get it completed in the week's time. This is actually one that we was, were very successful with. This is a, a shaker lap desk. Now mine never get finished because even though I build one along with the students throughout the week, come Friday I'm helping everyone else get theirs finished so mine never gets done. But this, uh, as simple as it is, was challenging. Just dimensioning the lumber and getting all those parts, cutting a groove in the bottom, uh, having a floating panel in the bottom, dovetails cut at a little bit of an angle, and then of course the lid is, um, is uh, a breadboard style lid, whereas you have a hardwood end on both ends that's held in place with a tongue and groove joint, and then you're, you're setting your, mortising your hinges, a lot of work. Anyway, there's a tool list required. You need to have good quality tools, and I try to steer you in that direction so that you're purchasing the right tools the first time. Um, of course, enrollment is limited. We only have 12 benches, and the class has been advertised for the last six months, so it's getting full. We may actually introduce a second class and a second advanced class. 
Uh, if you go to my website, robcosman.com, and go under the banner that talks about the workshop, it'll give you some photographs, lots of details, the tool list is on there, and the means of signing up. It's uh, a great opportunity to really spend a dedicated week or two weeks in immersing yourself in hand tools, and I can pretty much guarantee you you'll come out the other side, if you come out the other side. Sometimes we think people aren't going to survive the week, but it is a lot of work. But you will come out knowing what you need to know in order to literally do use any tool in the hand tool operations involved in building house furniture. Anyway, through the rest of the video, we're going to introduce uh, some interviews we did last year with folks that were taking the class. We're also going to have some interviews at the facility that we used last year. We only taught a couple of one-day classes. This will be the first time we're teaching the five-day training the hand. If you're looking for something to do next summer, take a look at this. This may just fit the bill. We'll see you. <laughs> it was a great class. It was an awesome experience. Uh, better than I imagined. I knew it would be good just from the content I've seen on the online workshop and just other things on the YouTube videos and things like that. So it was, it was fantastic. I think that's probably one of the hardest weeks I've worked, but also the most educational and fun. Bunch of group, bunch of good people, uh, excellent instructor and uh, all came together to make for a wonderful experience. I'd definitely do it again. Um, a lot of work, um, but definitely worth it. Every day, every minute is a learning experience. You know, you, you, uh, I've been working on this stuff, I've been working on sharpening for years and never been able to really get it where it needed to be, where my craftsmanship could, uh, could progress. Sharpening always limited me and uh, you know, the first day we got through sharpening and um, I knew it was going to have a pretty significant impact on um, the furniture that I build, the pieces that I build for the rest of my life. Well, I'm a visual learner. I cannot get it. Reading a book or even watching videos is tough, but uh, to be hands-on in class with the instructor and get immediate feedback is essential to make any progress, at least for me. Can we get me have a real close look? Not too close. All right, now this is, tell me which dovetail in your... This is the through. I want to get a little better light on that. No wedges anywhere. From the saw? Yeah. No, saw. no test fit? No test fit. That's the way we like it. All right, so of all the dovetails you've cut, what number is that? That was the first one. First ever? Well, I cut some pieces that I made mistakes on, but the first one I ever put together. First assembled dovetail. All right, that's pretty impressive. Uh, this is my first one. First ever? First ever. First ever assembled dovetail? Yep. First All right, then let's get in close and see. Actually, I better leave the camera like this. Okay, turn it like that. Huh. Get up really close. No wedges in there. Is this the one you're most proud of? So this is a half blind. Half blind. First half blind, no okay. test cuts, off the saw, glue it together and plane it down. Let's see if we can't get this to focus in well. Not incredibly perfect yet, but that's, uh, I never thought I'd ever get, have the skills to do that. So as you said, off the saw, no test fit, made out of poplar and poplar aspen. Poplar and walnut. Pop poplar and walnut, thank you. You'd think I know my Not woods. about trying to cut dovetails before I got here, but I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have developed habits that wouldn't have been to my advantage. I think it's best just to come and just learn good habits from the beginning, basically, and just go around. Take years of practice, and um, uh, so it, it just it gave me an advantage that I'm not sure I ever would have gotten. I don't have lots and lots of time to spend woodworking. When I'm doing it, I want to be productive. I want to turn out um, pieces that I'm proud of, pieces that my, will be in my family for a long time. Um, so. I don't want to spend a lot of time learning. This is a pretty condensed way to learn quickly, to, to advance your, your hand tool skills, to advance uh, your craftsmanship. Sharpen, learn to take a piece of four-quarter stock, um, rough stock down to three-eighths, um, flat on all sides. Everything's flat and perpendicular. Um, mortise and tenon? Mortise and tenons, yep. Both, um, both, both uh, po partials and throughs, wedged mortise and tenons. Uh, learned shooting, learned, got it. 
so many things that I'm still kind of going to go home now and spend some time thinking about all the things we learned. And so. you came from where? I came from Anchorage, Alaska. So you flew down to Seattle for the class? I did. And I did. you say, still say it was worth it? Oh, it was most definitely worth it.